how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about, the first thing it says is he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And a lot of times we miss that, we miss that little section with two words that says he went about, first of all, doing good, doing good, doing good. He went about, first of all, doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Jesus went about doing good. Amen. That Greek word good there is the word eurogeteo or eurogetes. And from that, that means working good or being a philanthropist or being a benefactor. Philanthropy is to promote human welfare by action or by gift. By action or by gift. Jesus, when he walked on this earth, and there is no, there's no mistaking what was written about him, but Jesus, as he was walking on this earth, was a Holy Ghost philanthropist. He went about promoting human welfare by action or by gift. Amen? And others who were around Jesus, they picked up on that same thing. And that desire to be a blessing was within them also. There's no way you can hang out in the spirit of Jesus and not desire to be a blessing. There is no way. But I want to tell you that the anointing is a whole lot more powerful and can do a whole lot more than what you give it credit for. You need to allow God to anoint you to be able to be a blessing and to be a benefactor. Be a blessing to be a giver. Amen. Not a person who thinks about giving. Not a person who says, one day I desire to be a giver. you got to start off being a giver with whatever you got right now. Amen. You can't say, well, one day I'm going to be a giver because one day I'll have something to give. No, right now you've got something to give. You may say, well, brother, you can come check out my pockets. I don't have a a dime on me right now. Well, that doesn't mean you don't have anything to give. You've got a lot you can give. You can give of your time. You can give of your abilities. You can give of your talents. Amen. You can give what you have, but if you, if you hold back with what you have right now, how are you ever going to be a giver? And Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim, and he said, draw water out and bear it to the governor of the feast, and they bear it to him. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, that it was made wine, and he did not know when it was come, from where it would come from, the disciples that drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, every man at the beginning to set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Well, you know what? The first miracle Jesus did had nothing to do with the healing. Had nothing to do with raising the dead. It had to do about with doing good. Just being a blessing wherever he went. Just being a blessing. What? With the anointing flowing through him. That's what Jesus was doing there. It would have cost them a lot more money. You know, some religious person that might have been there, they might have been looking and said, good grief. You know, why couldn't you have planned well enough? What's your problem? But you know what? The person filled with the anointing says, what can I do about this? You're always going to be surrounded by needs. Always going to be surrounded by by people who have needs. What can you do to be a blessing? And a lot of times we're just looking for the anointing to just, you know, minister to the sick. And that's great and that's wonderful and that's fine, but don't limit the anointing flowing through you. Don't limit the anointing flow through, flowing through your wallet, flowing through your bank account. Amen? You say, well, you know, what can I do? What can I do? I mean, maybe there's someone here who says, you know, I really don't have anything to give. I don't have any money. What can I do? Well, why don't you run some errands for somebody that's in need? Why don't you, why don't you go visit the shut-ins? Maybe you've got a little bit of money. Why don't you buy some food for a needy family? Maybe you've got a little bit more money. Why don't you say, you know, I'm going to be a blessing to a Bible school student and I'm going to, I'm going to pay their tuition. You know, the Word of God says over in 1 Corinthians 3, it says, the work of each one is going to become plainly, openly known or shown for what is. For the day of Christ will disclose and declare it. 
because it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test and critically appraise the character and worth of the work each person has done. If the work which any person has built on this foundation, if it survives this test, he'll get his reward. But if any person's work is burned up under the test, he'll suffer the loss of it all, losing his reward, though he himself will be saved, but only as one who's passed through the fire. You're going to be rewarded according to your work. A lot of people don't want to hear that. They think, well, it has nothing to do with what I do. Well, you're not saved by works of righteousness, but I want to tell you that's how you're going to be rewarded by your works. Amen. Allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through you and to do good. Revelation 22:12 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. What good works are you doing with the anointing that's on your life? Amen. How are you being a benefactor? How are you being a blessing? I'm talking about above and beyond your tithe. I'm talking about letting the Holy Ghost supernaturally flow through you. You know, Jesus probably could have cared less whether there was wine at the feast or not. You know, it wasn't his party. It wasn't, wasn't his wedding. He was just a guest. You know, what should a guest do? A guest just comes and just sits there and partakes of everything. But this guest decided, you know what, I'm anointed. I'm not just going to sit around and do something. I'm not going to sit around, but I'm going to do something. And a lot of people, you know, they do the same thing coming to church. They'll just kind of sit around. They'll come week after week, month after month, sometimes year after year, and never really do anything, thinking, I'm just a guest here. I'm just here to partake. I'm here to partake. No, you're not just here to partake. You're here to be a blessing. Amen. To give out of what God has put inside of you. Amen. And so I want to encourage you, begin taking steps to be that Holy Ghost philanthropist that God wants you to be. You say, well, how do I do that? You start with what you've got right now. You start with where you are right now and say, all right, God, I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to stretch myself.